Hello and welcome to Audio Analytics Authority. Today we are going to be diving into an exciting review of the IBS or DCO4 Pro. But first, a quick disclaimer. I have no affiliations with iBase, so this is a personal purchase. So rest assured that my opinions are unbiased. Now let's get started. The iBase DC04, it's a standard portable DAC&M known for its ultra low noise performance. iBase claims that the noise floor of this is at a nanovolt level. And it features a 4.4 mm balance and a 3.5 mm single ended output. With a USB-C input compatible with both Android and iOS devices. When you open the package, it comes with both the Lightning and the USB-C cables with a USB-C adapter, as well as a transparent case for storage purposes. Now, what is so special about this unit here? Now, for some context, I own the Empire's Odin, the Vision ES Phoenix. Specifically, when it comes to the Odin and the Phoenix, they tend to hiss with many sources including when connected to well-regarded DACs like the Mojo 2 that you see here, as well as the M15 Q-Style. I'm always looking out for a solution to issues like this. In this case, the hissing, it interrupts my listening experience quite a bit. So what made the DC04 Pro unique is that when I connect this to say my audits, there's a remarkable difference. The hissing was non-existent with both the Odin's as well as the Phoenix, and that alone is a significant advantage over other more expensive DACs I've tried. Secondly, the volume control button that you see here is another big plus. I find it more suitable for my listening experience, especially at night when it is quiet and I prefer lower listening volumes. And for comparison, I find the Q-Style M15 and the DDI5 TC44 Pro relatively loud, when connected to my MacBook Pro or iPhone, even at the lowest OS settings. This doesn't have a volume control button. So, the iBaseo DC04 Pro offers a more nuanced volume control, and you can scale it as you see fit. Which brings me to my third point on power and performance. So, I've tried this with headphones and high impedance IEMs, and it's more than sufficient. I've used it with the HD800S, the DT1990s, and also the Hi-Fi Man Arias, it's always had, had ample headroom beyond my listening needs. So there's no need to worry about that. Now, I've tested this amp DAC with a range of IEMs and headphones like the U12T, the Empire ES Odin, the Vision ES Phoenix, the Audio Oracle, Moondrop Blessing Tree, as well as full-size headphones such as the Aria and HD800S. The sound signature is warm, with a slight improvement in the true retrieval and separation. For instance, with classical music, it bring, brings out a more holographic feel to it. And IEMs like the U12Ts and Odin's, it's where it performs exceptionally well. The bass in Star Wars by Taylor Swift felt alive with a much more noticeable bass decay. And the treble in Missing You by Robin sparkles in a bright and nice sounding manner without sounding harsh nor sibilant. On the Moondrop Blessing Tree, however, it seems to thin out the vocals a bit, favoring instrumentals and music separation instead. And I would say the impact is definitely less observable as compared to the U12Ts that you see here, as well as the Vision ES Phoenix. I also tried this with the Audio Oracle, and personally, I find the Oracle a bit too shouty and bright for long listening. However, when I use it with the iBase, so I found that it helped tame down songs such as the Picky Snares on Swimming Pools by Kendrick Lamar, it became less intense than before. That being said, one thing to note is that it doesn't work as well with luxurious sounding IEMs such as the Vision Years Phoenix that I've tried. I found that the DC04 Pro made the Phoenix a tad too warm for my liking. It was slightly muddled at the base region. I thought to also include a quick comparison with the M15 so that you can get a better understanding of what it sounds like. In M15, it delivers a meatier, a more vibrant and warm bass with a more pronounced bass impact. And I found this more suitable when paired with the 800S as well as the Arias. 
I was quite surprised when I heard details I have never heard when using the DC04 Pro. And I think that's attributed to how the DC04 Pro excels at control over bass, sub bass, and the treble region. The sound improvement was very evident when I listened to certain genre like pop music. In comparison, the M15 just, just sounded a lot more flat and dry. So it really depends on what you're looking for. Personally, I would say I prefer this a lot more to M15 because the DC04 Pro is at half the price at about 120 USD and it performs significantly well. Lastly, I just want to highlight some of the personal experience I've had using this DAC for about three months now. For me personally, minor details matter a lot. Things like he's saying, even if it's not, not noticeable with music on, I still find it a difficult thing to accept. And so the M15 has already been relegated to just headphones such as the HD800S, which it performs really well in. On the other hand, this has to be my go-to for traveling, working in office, and also when I head outdoors due to its synergy with my IEMs. For context, my daily work usually involves my MacBook in clamshell mode. I do a lot of coding. I do a lot of data-related work. For that reason, I try to simplify the gadgets around me so that I just focus on boosting my productivity. This is one of the things that I strongly recommend. The nice thing about this is that at the end of the day, when I'm done with work, I just have to change the cable from USB-C to the lightning cable, it's connected to the iPhone, and I can get going. Even though I own desktop DACs and M, like the topping stack, the D90 SE and A90, this has already been my daily driver since a couple of, for a couple of months now. Perhaps one of the drawbacks that I wanted to highlight was the lack of support on iPhones. The app that controls this is only available on Android. Although I didn't find it to be an issue as an iPhone user, as it was pretty much plug and play for me without needing any customizations. The other drawback I can think of is that when we switch from headphones to IEMs, and if I didn't turn down the volume, it's going to blast in my ears. So be careful when switching to low impedance gears, and I think this applies to all other DACs as well, even for the M15, you'd have no volume control, so be very careful, especially if you were to go letting Tidal control the whole volume output, for example. So to conclude, the iBASO DC04 Pro, it's a remarkable piece of equipment for those seeking a detailed, low noise listening experience without breaking the bank. It is a worthy investment, especially for audiophiles looking to make the most out of their high-end IEMs and headphones. Personally, I would recommend IEM users having the same demands as me to consider getting this. So if you are facing issues on hissing, you are looking for a proper DAC for audio improvement that comes with volume control, this is the one. The separation that I've heard from this is extremely good and it's comparable to many other higher priced DACs out there in the market. So with that, Thanks for tuning in and let me know what other products you would like me to review in the comments and see you next time.